And welcome to today's segment of The Power of Money. I'm your host, Michelle Graves, nationally known as The Money Lady. Since 1976, been trying to educate and empower people around money, finances, all kinds of issues, but also as a part of what I contribute to our community is interviewing fascinating people who have done extraordinary things in a non-traditional way. I happen to believe that most of us would really like to learn about what makes that incredible person so incredible. And you know what? I have a venue through this television station to interview people the way I want to, in a comfortable, relaxed environment, ask them the questions I want to ask them, and not have to be concerned about advertisers, uh, commercials, all of that. So you can sit back and enjoy these telecasts and my guests and give me feedback. And I do encourage you uh, to give feedback. If you are new to watching this show, you can always look at back episodes by going to my YouTube channel, www.youtube.com forward slash the power of money. And you will see about 67 shows that are on that venue and more to come because as I interview um, I do put them on YouTube so please avail yourself of, of, of wonderful information awesome guests and today's guest is truly awesome and I know I say that a lot but I'm telling you his life is such a stellar 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 story of an African-American man who has overcome obstacles, challenges, et cetera, a pioneer in the area of athletics and sports for racial equality. And that individual that I'm having as my guest today is none other than Jack Jackson. And for those of you that don't know Jack Jackson, you just might as well sit down because you're getting ready to learn some stuff and you're going to be as moved as I was to extend him the invitation to uh, come on my show and to be interviewed because there's some things I want to ask him that I can't ask him uh, on emails and over the phone. But let me give you a little bit of information about my next guest. Jack Jackson um, spent his early youth in southeastern Kentucky where his father was a coal miner. He was educated in the public school system of Dayton, Ohio. He is a graduate of Eastern Kentucky University, where along with four other black student athletes, he broke the color barrier, eventually to be enshrined in Eastern Kentucky University's Athletic Hall of Fame. He holds a master's degree from Austin Pay State University in Clarksville, Tennessee, where he was a summa cum laude graduate in 19. 75, thus becoming one of the earliest black recipients of a graduate degree from that Tennessee institution. He holds distinguished alumni status at Eastern Kentucky, where in 1997 he became the first African American president of Eastern Kentucky University's National Alumni Association and he enjoys currently outstanding alumna status at Austin Pay State University. He is a military veteran of the Vietnam era. You all know I love military guys. He was stationed at Fort Myer, Virginia, being drafted into the U.S. Army while competing, completing his undergraduate education and eventually becoming um, serving, I should say, his tour duty at the Pentagon in Washington, D.C. Mr. Jackson is married to his lovely wife, Shirley Ann, a Berea College graduate and a native of Berea, Kentucky. They are the parents of two adult children, Stacy and Eric, who also live in Dayton, Ohio. He's a former community relations advisor for Dayton Metropolitan Housing, and for over 25 years held supervisory and managerial positions in both the public and private sector. I could go on and on and on and on about this man 
because when you are in the presence of greatness, it just goes on and on and on. And so I'm not going to say much more. I'm going to introduce you to him, and then we're going to immediately clip over to an interview that was done with Jack Jackson, with the president of Eastern Kentucky University, and one of the retired uh, professors who is director of the Alumni Society. So, sir, powerhouse. <laughs> oh, you're something. Huh? Michelle, it's a pleasure to be with you today. Certainly. It's, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Dear. Awesome. 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 What do you have to say about your life before flipping this over to this? Well, I, in all video. honesty, uh, so much about life is timing. Uh, thank you for the kind words, and I thank you for uh, the truth, the Jack. <laughs> I, I, I think that uh, a combination of life experiences, uh, spiritual awareness, uh, strong parental background, uh, uh, respect for self, respect for authority, respect for rule of law has all come together uh, with a, a gift that I humbly accept. Uh, I've come to realize I'm predisposed to helping people. I, but that's a good thing. I like doing that. That's a and, good thing. And that uh, more or less buttressed my, my views in terms of wanting to help and to outreach and to touch people uh, in a positive fashion. Um, the events that, that took place, the the accolade that uh, happened along the way, I mm -hmm. think, they're just, uh, I humbly accept those, but more importantly, I think I've been able to uh, use my out-of-the-box personality, if you will, uh -huh. uh, to, to reach people and to encourage folk. Uh, the term I aspire uh, to inspire before I expire, I, which I can't claim as my own, was given to me by an old preacher about 70 years ago, mm. and uh, he told me that this is what he saw in me. I just yearned to help folk. And that may sound corny. I, I don't care, really. But, uh, yeah. but uh, the results are shown. I've been able to, to touch some young people, to inspire folk. And at the end of the day, at the end of one's life, yes. this is really the culmination of what you're all about because the other stuff, the, the material aspects of life, the, mm -hmm. the stuff we acquire, stuff. The, the names that we create yes. along the way, mm -hmm fades away. Yes. It all fades away. So what you have done for people, what you, that that's how you live on. Yes, your legacy. Your legacy, the folk yes. that you have touched yes. and who as a result of your little help inspired them because see, it compounds. Yes. See the folk that you help more often than not want to help other people. Well, so, that's the whole. So so the, yeah. it, it's it's compounding. Mm -hmm. And once you realize that it's not just about you. Ah. Say that again. Once that, if you can really em em embrace that, I mean, mm -hmm, em embody mm -hmm, that, yes. that is not solely about you. Mm -hmm. That frees you up uh, to, to do more for people. Because the, the stuff that you got coming, you guys can come anyway. So the stuff that you got coming will come anyway. See, what you do, if you can, is empower, inspire people. That, that's what, if you're looking for legacy, is that what you crave? But most often, people, don't, people who do things are not necessarily concerned about creating a legacy. They just do. They, they, don't, they don't keep tally. Yeah. Yeah. They don't keep tally what, what they do. See, if you've got to keep tally, mm. see, you don't have time to keep doing. Say that again. See, see, people are, are so concerned about laying up treasure, if you will, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of uh, what's my name going to be like, or right. whatever I got to do to get there, I'll do. Mm -hmm. And they've lost sight of the fact that if I help this person here to do something worthwhile, that's going to compound. That's going to grow. And that's what I've seen in my, in my time. And I, I've been an eyewitness mm. to history. I, I, uh, the years of EKU, uh, the folk that I met the thing that I was able to do, uh, it's at my doorstep now. It's, it's, it's in my lap. Uh, 
It inspires me to do even more. I, I'm energized. My wife says, I like a sophomore. You know, I know well. <laughs> <laughs> Be that as it may, you know. Yeah, yeah. I embrace this, uh, this desire, this gift to, to touch and move people. Young, last week, a young man, Earl Nichols from Dayton, Ohio. Okay. A psychology major got, his, got in grad school. I told his family, because I had some, I had some input there. Okay. Uh, let's call Earl Dr. Nichols. Now. Now. Right. Okay, he's 22 years old. Yeah, speak it now. Okay. Yeah. So he sent me a thank you card, nice note, uh -huh. and signed it, Dr. Earl Nichols. Yes. So he's 22 years old, entering grad school, which you'll have to wait a couple of years. But and he on, will be doctor. Get on to his PhD. See? Yes. But what we've done, see, we have put this in his mind. See, I love that. We have implanted within this, this young man what he can do. And yes. see, what's going to happen, see, you know, I'll be dead and gone. I mean, come on. But Earl Nichols uh, is going to uh, uh, touch and inspire other people to achieve and go on to great things. See, so, it, so what little bit I did, uh, you know, whatever that might be, is, is mm -hmm. but Earl's going to do more. So he's going to have students that he's going to tutor and teach who are going to spread the word even more. So it's going to, like a pool, a rock in a, in a pool of water, it's just going to, Wrinkle up. Uh, you know what? And I must say this. This is why I just fell in love with you straight up. Because you asked me, what can I do to help you? I meant that. I, I, mean, I, I know, I, I, I know I, you yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I'm just telling you that so few, I can count the number of people who have ever said genuinely, what can I do to help you, Michelle? They, they're, they're, they tend to be self-serving and self-centered. And I'm like, Jack, you and I know it's bigger, but people have to see it bigger yeah. to do yeah. better. Yeah. They have to. And then some people get so caught up in the minutia yeah. of life, which is, can I just get through the day? And I'm saying, but it's bigger. It's bigger. You know, I talked to Ron Todd, whom you know. Oh, I love my, him. My, my prayer partner, Big Ron Todd. Yeah, I love him. Uh, uh -huh. We tell each other all the time, by helping, you can't lose. Right. I can't lose. Right. <laughs> I, mean, I can't lose. Right. Uh, wherever I help, that expands my personal spheres of influence. Right. See? I mean, but I, it I, takes a giant of a person to see it like that I guess. because I that guess. is a God consciousness, Jack. God does not get smaller. God is expansive. He's always thinking bigger. So I said, you're big is very small when a person is on a bigger path, but it has to work by giving. Well, it's almost, uh, it's all, if, if you understand the process, Michelle, mm -hmm. If you help folk, so I can call anybody in this country. I can call anybody right now, help anybody now because of the network that I have developed yes, yes. through helping people. Yes, exactly. See, exactly. And, 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 and that's what allows us to grow as a people. Right. As, and, we, right. and we must learn to network more. We must learn to dialogue more with folk mm -hmm, around us, mm -hmm. folk of different ilk. Right. Folk who have different views on right, things. Right, right to share right, and to right. understand things right, uh, and come out of our cocoons mm -hmm. and uh, our little self-imposed boxes. Yes, I know. like the term self-imposed. I like you saying that. Yeah, well, it, it truly is. You, you uh, most of the damage that we do to ourselves mm. is self-induced. My God. If the truth be told. Yeah. The yeah. point, most you did it to yourself. Don't admit it. Right. They'll blame the world, mm -hmm. the system, mm -hmm. their gender, their race. Now, I'm not naive. I know that there are factors that determine one's outcome. But, right. But at the end of the day, Michelle, you pretty much call the own shot. So you can't control who you were born to. No, you can't. Where you were born. No, you can't. These are what I call non merit factors. <laughs> Okay, keep going. What happens keep is going. what do you do? What, now, now that I'm here, okay. I'm black, I'm white, I'm Hispanic, whatever I am. Right. I'm right. here now. Now, am I going to bask 
in my own self-pity? Am I going to embrace a dead past that I knew nothing about in the first place? Right. Or am I going to do what I can do to improve myself, irrespective of what I came from? Right. That's it. You see, life is a series of choices. Yes, it is. That, that, that you make every day. Every day. That determine mm -hmm. your outcome. It, it, it's no secret uh, when you watch folk who are achieving, who are doing things. It's not happenstance, Michelle. Uh, that was planned. Jack, every morning. You know, uh, and, you know, and, <laughs> and that's not to say now that, that, uh, that you've got to be, uh, be a monk and a monster and some right. more stuff. You still can be you. Right. But, all, but as, you be, as you're being yourself, right. make those choices that are going to benefit you long term. So how does a person develop the mindset that projects them into their destiny? Because, you know, the whole thing today is purpose, 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 purpose. And I'm like, well, that's a nice book. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and Rick, uh, you made a bunch yeah, of money. Uh, it, yeah. yeah, Rick joined it. But, you made, but the reality is this, translating that into practice. How does one do that, Jack? Well, I, I preach self-motivation. Okay, we'll talk I, about I that. I preach self-motivation in this regard. Uh, one is influenced by the, the, the periods, the folk around you. Yes. Uh, when I was a young man, uh, I knew a black school secretary, Miss mm -hmm. Roberta Coleman. Okay, knew. okay. Uh, I knew uh, Russell Carter, the first black city judge in Okay. Dayton. Dr. Gunn, uh, Dr. Stanley Coleman, two black doctors. Okay. A little bit, four or five people, professional mm -hmm. blacks, mm -hmm. within my sphere of influence. But then, but today, young people, irrespective of race, are surrounded by all manner of professionals. They so, are. And so communications are all, we're inundated with information. Right. There is no excuse for not knowing. Now, I grant you, there are distractions that plague young folk today that, that didn't plague me and even mm -hmm. yourself. Exactly. But at the same time, they're smarter too. They're more oh, informed. Oh, sheesh. Oh my God! So, so now, yes, they are. Uh, success, and this may sound uh, harsh, mm -hmm. not meant to be, but if you want to succeed, you will. Now, and once you decide that you want to succeed, see the world likes winners. Oh, don't we? When they see you trying to improve, mm -hmm. invariably, Michelle, folk come out of the woodwork to help you. Yes. <laughs> you get how more help. You, how do you explain that you phenomenon? Get, you get more uh, yeah, people. The it, world it, likes it, winners. The world likes winners. They want to be a part. Of, they want to yeah. hitch up to that star. Yeah. Everybody wants to hitch up to a star. Mm. It, it, winners uh, deflect the race piece. People don't care. If you got a better mousetrap, Michelle Gray, somebody going to buy it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, you get help. Yeah, yeah. You can be yeah. black with two heads. Right. If 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 you have a a, a, a service to give, mm -hmm. that's competitive. They are gonna do you know, it. I tell many people in my travel around the country. Now is perhaps the best time to be black. I think so. Okay. Yeah. See, see, we're no longer hampered by the old mythology. Mm-hmm. That dog don't hunt anymore. Mm -mm, that dog doesn't hunt don't anymore. Hunt, see? Yes. Pe people may have their own personal idiosyncrasies about mm -hmm. a number of things. But in the world of, 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 of concrete biz of, of business, 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 you mm -hmm. don't care. Right. Understand that. This mm. is what my young people must understand. This is not your granddaddy's world. It's not your daddy's world. Right. Today. Right. So but you know, this is, this is what I find to be so amazing because the power of internet over the last decade yes. has dashed, cast down all the myths, the issues. I mean, you can see it's whatever made the playing you feel. It's made flat. It made it flat. Flat. When I, a person that's kind of hacked to me doesn't know why I'm in a big office complex or in my basement. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, he, 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 he don't know. Right. So I'm, I'm not judged right. like I was even right. 20 years ago. Right, right. Mass right. communications has unleashed oh, we. genius. Oh, People who heretofore 
wouldn't get looked at. Right. Because they're already right. typecast. Right. Put that, but not now. That is such a liberating, liberating word. Mm -hmm. It is because many people um, are still stuck yeah. in a time that does not exist anymore. But they allow themselves to be stuck there. And as, as they also, need to get unstuck. There, there's safety there, too. See, oh, sure it's if, safety. If you allow yourself to be stuck, then you don't have to flex. Right. You don't have to reach. Right. See, now right. It, it, so when you're competing, you have to reach. Yes. But if you, re if, if you uh, decide, I'm just going to stay in, 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 in this mud pit. Okay. You know, I'm not going, I'm, I'm saved. I don't have anything. Right. <laughs> I don't have nothing. I, 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 but, you know, mm -hmm. if I don't, you know, I, I, I don't have to stretch. Right. I don't have to reach. Right. I don't have to commit. Right. So for those of us, that's a choice. That, at the end of the day, again, uh, it's a choice of what you want to do. Mm -hmm. If you choose to remain stuck in a time or, you know, where you say, say well, it's because I'm black, because I'm a woman, because I'm, I have some uh, uh, handicaps, mm -hmm. that's on you because I, the world, the world go, is going to go by you. It truly the world is. is moving fast. Yeah, yeah. It is. Yeah. I am so glad that, that we're having this open, well. transparent dialogue because uh, one of my frustrations, in fact, I just texted my son this morning. Uh, he's in Tampa, and as I was driving up to do these shows, I texted him, no regrets, no regrets. ever. Yeah. And he calls me Ma Dukes. Ma Dukes. Ma Dukes. And uh, I said to him, good morning, son. Thinking about your bold, radical approach to life. And um, I appreciate and respect the man that you are. And I, t I, t I said, just remember, no regrets right. ever, Ma Dukes. And uh, I just think it's important that people remember at all times mm -hmm. that what is done is done. That's right. That's right. There's nothing you can do to change that thing from what that thing did or didn't do. Yeah. You have to keep, life is progressive. Life is progress, but I am challenged, and I sure as I, and this is why I wanted you on because I think that at this time in history, it's important that we honor and um, venerate those who actually paved the way, because there are body counts, Jack. There are body counts Quite from your generation. Oh no, come on, we. <laughs> I'm not that much younger than you. There are body counts for um, what you went through and how you dealt with it from your time. I look at men in your generation and you all are profound. You're profound. Now I have to ask you a question because I've been dying to ask it. You spoke at Ole Mississippi. Ole Miss. Ole Miss. 92. 92. What was that like? This is, I mean Mississippi as Nina <laughs> Simone said, Mississippi. You know, they would lynch, kill, beat. I mean, you know, Miss an old miss. Oh, come on. Well, uh, that's, a know, <laughs> that's a confederate. That's a confederate flag la waving. I've, I've got many friends uh, in Mississippi. Okay. Uh, one of the special men, uh, Leroy Mullins, former trainer at uh, you know, at Ole Miss okay. in Oxford, and uh, he was a, a classmate of mine at EKKU. Really? Back, back in the day, and I, he brought me in to speak there. The chancellor brought me in to speak to yes. the, the football team and to inspire that team, I guess. What did and you he, say? And he was okay. concerned about, so let's see, the legacy handcuffs people. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mullen was so concerned about my feelings because of the legacy, mm -hmm. the reputation. Well, come on, Jack. <laughs> I mean, it is what I, it is. I, I, I mean, I, we don't look back, yeah, but you but know, it, I know it, you're kind of looking over your shoulder well, like, oh, well, okay. All right. Okay. Well, here again, Michelle, I think that... Uh, I have learned in my walk that uh, people are just people. They are. Uh, influenced by what they have been exposed to. Mm -hmm. uh, it's almost unfair to, to continue to stigmatize Mississippi. It, but it has a horrible legacy <sighs> in terms of racial relations uh, with, with, with minority people, with black people. Let's be frank about that. But I, I think that for our younger group today, from coming today, Mm -hmm. We need to understand that people are, are just people and not allow ourselves to be handcuffed by the past. 
I and, agree. And, and that's what I did. I went down there, and uh, they, I was treated very fine. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I, I was. And bear in mind now, I am an eyewitness to history. Well, that's what I know. Fifty plus. I, 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 mean, I, I was a sophomore when Meredith went to Ole Miss in sixty in sixty two. James Meredith. Yeah. Uh, so and I, I I was uh, the first athlete to compete against Vanderbilt in nineteen sixty three and on their home field. So, but at twenty years old, what do you know? You know, they they the the, the, the loudspeaker blared out Jack Jackson, the first Negro to uh -huh. compete against the Commodores in at no home field. You know. Uh, <laughs> you know, better carry that ball. You know, you know uh -huh. I mean, so we, uh, I think that we, we place too much uh, value on the past mm -hmm. in, in that regard. All too often we use that as an excuse. Or maybe a crutch. A crutch, you know, a not crutch. to succeed. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. uh, even though it was what it was, and you're right, I mean, mm -hmm. what happened, happened. It did. But uh, thank God that, that we were... Uh, uh, sustained by, by mm -hmm. other people, faith, mm -hmm. uh, that allowed us to overcome some things yes. and to make a difference down the line. See, you have to stick around to make a difference. I like that. <laughs> you <laughs> have to stick around yeah, 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 to yeah, make yeah, a yeah, difference. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It, it, it's like you have to stay the course. Okay. You know, to and, and be around to tell the story. Right. Because see, everybody's affected, not just black, but everybody's affected by right. this thing. Right, right. Uh, as uh, I have a, a ton of folks who have just embraced me because I guess I snuck around. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and there's I, something I, to be said. I humbly accept that. Yes, you know, you, there's but something it, to be uh, said about that. But, but, but the good that comes out of this mm -hmm. is, 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 is far more important than building a story about a, a less enlightened past. Right, right. You know. And frankly, Jack, I tell people our country suffered from discrimination. Mm -hmm. And, and the, it's still with us. I mean, right. The, but the whenever you don't elevate your best and brightest to the top, yeah. that's whenever, yeah. whenever, as in economics, when we talk about discrimination, whenever you do not allow the best and the brightest to rise to the top, male, female, gay, I agree. you I agree. Yeah. hurt your country's you future. And we have hurt this country. Immeasurably. I, so I All tell folks, get over it. Yeah. We don't have it like that anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're competing globally yeah. with right. monsters. That's right. And and I'm serious. Yeah, yeah. You know that military yeah. monster. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't have the time to say I don't like that. Or person. luxury. Or luxury. Or luxury. Yeah, That's no. over. Yeah. We I, I, and and smart people realize that. Yes. Uh, genius can be found anywhere. Uh, right. Genius can be gen uh, people who want to do can be found anywhere. Yes. Here, uh, irrespective of, of, of how you look or where you right, come from. So right, right. We're all Americans. At, right. At, at, the yeah, day, at the end of the day. Yeah, see, uh, at, at the, the end, end of the day, we're all day. Americans. Yes. And I think that that has to take that and embody that, embrace that. Mm -hmm. Now, I think it's wise to know about our past. Yeah, I, I that's know, I know Captain Verse. Right, right. I'm a history major about right, our past. Right, right. And also being an eyewitness to discrimination, mm -hmm, a mm -hmm, victim many mm -hmm, times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that notwithstanding, I was shown that I had to go on. Right. I mean, in spite of what was taking place around me, I think looking back on that now, I, mm -hmm. I dared to believe that I had a calling to stay the course. I know you had a to calling. To tell the story. Jack to, 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 uh, yes. uh, and to, and strangely enough, when you are a champion for your people, other folks like it too, not just black people. Mm -hmm. I got a ton of white folks I, I know call you friends. Do. I uh, know you do. Because first of all, they know more than you might know what you went through. Right, right. Because they were there too. They were there. They know. They know. They know. They know. They know. Mm -hmm. It uh, story that was kind of comical. I was I've been in school I guess a couple of years and well, well my second year of school and several of the white athletes mm -hmm. the track, I was track athletes wouldn't come into the big mass shower room. Okay. Okay. And I didn't know why they wouldn't come in there. You I know. told you, like, I'm up in here. <laughs> I mean, you know what's up? <laughs> so the coach, he he went, he got ballistic, and he just got on those guys, and then he almost whipped in telling me why they were that way. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Michelle, there were young people, young men from Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, mm. West Virginia, who had never seen a black person naked. <gasps> Wow. They came from those hamlets. Right, and those right, areas right, right. 
with all manner of mythology. Right, mythology. That they that they right. came equipped with by, right. by, by, by their dads, their right. uncles, their Ignorance. granddads. Right. It, now, when I hear the danger in that, when you preach this crazy dogma yeah. to young people, yes. you hurt them. Yes. Because these young men came to they're like Jack Jackson. Mm -hmm. I, I'm their teammate. Right. I, I'm, I'm their friend. Right. But they were torn because my granddaddy said he had a tail. Right. Uncle Bob said he had horns. Right. But I don't see Jack Seattle Jack's horns. Right. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> he had a shade. But, <laughs> so, so what's up? Right. So people who preach that mythology back and have hurt their children. Well, and I because I just read an NPR survey where they talked openly about race issues and the real challenge today is that a lot of younger white people are upset with their families and and it was all on NPR where they typed in their responses exactly. from Twitter and they were like you got to be kidding me why don't you stop these lies we can look at it on internet we can see it ourselves. This is a lie. That's why the improvement, that's why I'm so hopeful of the future. Oh, I have to be, be hopeful. Be, 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 because all of the old mythology is dying off. Because they dying uh, off. Yeah, right with, no, with, no, it, we, it died with them. Yeah, it's it gonna died, die, it's it gonna died die with them. them. It's okay. going to die with them. It's, uh, it's unfortunate that it yeah. lasted so long. Yes. But uh, that is what we're faced with. But I think that this is why I'm hopeful of the future. This is why I'm, I'm so hopeful. Well, and, I tell and, and you, I am as well. Is that for what I'm pushing now is for young black people to understand that you can exceed the circumstances by just doing the right thing. Right. You know, most people are average. You may have a prodigy here and there, mm -hmm. but most of us make out the the big average part. Mm -hmm. What separates the wheat from the tear is when people get exposure. See, ah. See, exposure yes. uh, cures a lot of ills. I like that, Jack. The exposure allows me, mm -hmm. you know, to see other points of view. Right. Uh, to to uh, it allows me to have more self worth. Mm -hmm. You know, the people who have good self, I don't mean false swagger. But if you've yeah. got genuine good self worth, you're less volatile. Yes. You're less prone to argue. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you're more understanding. Yes. Either and you, you listen. You're not spring wound. Right, right. And you, and you can hear uh, other points of view from the different from your own. Right. And be okay. Right. See, don't kill the messenger. Right. You know, you may disagree with the message. Right. But don't kill the message. Right. So, all of that comes about as a result of exposure that we give ourselves. Right. That, to me, exposure is as important as education. I would have to agree with you on that. Because as I look at my life, God, in other cultures and living in other countries, yes. everything changes you've done, when you you've done see. Russia and I China. Mean, you, you, I mean, come on. You, 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 like, whatever. You, you, you know? you, the, the fears are gone. See, yeah, well, if, 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 if you're unshackled by the fears, mm -hmm. see, then you can make strides towards success. So how do we move forward? Um, and I really need to show this okay. video because I want to. We, we move forward be, we, by, by doing this. We, what? We get to our young people. Mm -hmm. We as older people yes. have to put aside a lot of our idiosyncrasies okay. and, uh, and, 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 and not get hung up on their frailties. Okay. Because I'm convinced, and most folk who got good sense mm -hmm. <laughs> are convinced also that our young people have great, great, great minds, fertile oh, minds. Oh, jeez, yes. Our charge now is to just go beyond our, our boxes, older mm -hmm. people, and gather in those who you believe won't succeed, and mm -hmm. they're out there. Mm -hmm. But we've got to go an extra step to get some of those kids. See? I think because you're right. Because they haven't had the benefit of, 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 the, of the, the parentage that we had, perhaps, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. the, the rules. I, I, I knew stuff at 10 years of age. The guy learned it when they were 20. I knew it from daddy. When yes. He went to the eighth yes. grade. Yes, yes. See, yeah. in my household, being without, we were poor, mm -hmm. being without then was a license to misbehave. Thank you. See, you. Thank you. Being poor was not a license. 
right. to be misbehaved or be bad. Right. Okay. Right. So we, but we as a people have, we've got to go, I've got, you got to, got to go further. I said, look, let me talk about, about Japan. Let me, talk, let me holler at you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, let me holler at you. Yeah, let me holler okay, at you about yeah. some things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you this. I, it's been proven to me, shown to me, that if you show sincerity, mm -hmm. it will bridge an age gap. Well, you're 70, yeah. and you are one, <laughs> and I'm in my 60s, and I don't have to make any excuses, but um, when you talk about that issue of sincerity, which is you talk to them straight. Yeah, well, they read you. See. Another they, thing, because you, you can't, that's, that's, that, that bothers some older people, too, because mm -hmm. you, 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 you can't fool them. Right, because they were there. Yeah, yeah, see. I mean, you, they yeah, watched. Yeah, well, you can't fool young people. Right. They, they know, too. They know more than you think they know. I agree. Uh, but we have to make sure that they're, that they're, that they're channeled, mm -hmm. that they're taught, and we've got to do more. I, mm. I'll, I'll just say to you. Uh, uh, wow. We we've got to do more. Do more. Tell me how. You in your sphere of influence, yeah. folks, as you know, when you see young folks who show promise. Yes. The Earl Nichols of the world. Okay. And others. And they're a lot okay. more than Earl. Okay, okay, okay. We make, make, make it your, be a committee of one. Okay. Reach those two or three. You got mm. 10 friends, Michelle. Oh. Who's yeah. who doing the same thing. Yes. Then, see, then, then that, that, that compounding effect I talked about earlier mm -hmm. will take place. Mm-hmm. Tutor, two or three of them. Mm. So you're talking about mentoring or tutoring? Me, me, tut mentoring, tutoring, being okay. example for talking okay. to. Okay, you know, okay, okay. You do mm. that with, with, with your two or three. Okay. Then they, and they, you they, have they, your two right, or three. Your friends do the same thing. And then thing. we do the same thing and it, and it grows. That's how it works. Wow. If we could, I'd like to get this, um, uh, this uh, interview from the president of EKU, Eastern Kentucky University. For those of you that are watching, EKU is over 100 years old, and they went way beyond, way beyond in bringing in um, black athletes, of which Jack Jackson was one of four. So if we can switch that interview briefly, and then I'll get back to this interview. Could we please? Welcome to EKU Then and Now. I'm your host, Paul Blanchard, and I spent 35 years at Eastern as a faculty member and administrator. The focus of this program is on prominent EKU faculty, staff, and alumni who have had a meaningful involvement at Eastern during its history of more than 100 years. They will comment on what EKU has been like during its storied past, how it has changed, and what we might expect its future to hold. Our guest this month is one of EKU's distinguished alumni, Jack Jackson. Joining me to interview Mr. Jackson is EKU President Dr. Doug Whitlock. Doug and Jack mm -hmm. were EKU mm -hmm. classmates in the early 1960s. Uh, Jack is unabashed in his love for EKU in large measure because of the way his alma mater has changed his life and provided him the tools and resources to be successful. He served as the president of the EKU National Alumni Association in 1997-98 and has devoted years of service to his alma mater. Jack Jackson was, was one of the very first black student athletes to enroll at Eastern. Although he grew up mostly in Ohio, much of his very early years were spent in the coal fields of Lynch, Kentucky, where his father was a coal miner. During his undergraduate years, he was, he was along with Doug Whitlock, a history major and a very good student. He also became one of the premier track athletes in the history of the Ohio Valley Conference. After graduating from Eastern, Jack earned his master's degree in history from Austin P. State University. He spent over 25 years in executive and managerial positions in both the public and private sectors. Over the years, he has come to know that his ministry and passion is to uplift and motivate others, realizing that we live in a world of an age of inevitable change and that many of us become overwhelmed. His creed has become, I aspire to inspire before I expire. And Jack and I were talking about expiring <laughs> at lunch. <laughs> I think all of you watching this program will understand why he's in great demand as a speaker all over the United States. And Jack, once again, it's finally great to, to get to meet you My in pleasure, person. Um, to start out, just tell us a little bit about why you came to EKU as a freshman in 1961. And what, what was it like 
um, for a teenager to, to, to be on this campus in that, in that uh, era? Well, the first part of your question, Paul, was Don Daly, great track coach, a friend of Van Duggan and I, I uh, was backfield coach at Dayton Roosevelt in Dayton after he finished uh, EKU and the set with the NFL. And uh, he came back to be on the staff of Glenn Presnell as backfield coach and also to double up as track coach. So he is recruiting. And a couple of fellows he talked to in Dayton about Eastern Kentucky State College. And where is that? And he told us Richmond, Kentucky. So we came down for a summer's visit. And of course, and I might back up a bit here, Paul, and say that Ben Price and Robert Scott were here in school uh, in the second semester of 1960. So they were actually here, the first two black students here to get scholarship help. And but, uh, in 61, myself and Urban Lewis came into, into Eastern, and uh, we came here. And, I, and to be quite honest with you, I mean, at 18, what do you know? Uh, <laughs> at my house, no one had gone to college, uh, great parents, both of them, but no one had directed us toward college as, as such. And uh, I went to run track and, uh, and uh, see girls, like any 18-year-old. So <laughs> I came to, to Eastern, and it was the beginning of my life uh, being changed, uh, a place where I met uh, good people, uh, where I was allowed to, to, to flex. Uh, in Dayton, Ohio, at that time, we had Dayton Dunbar, an all-black high school, and Dayton Roosevelt, my school, where, where blacks went. And in those days, unless you were a super athlete, you didn't get, as you know, Dr. Whitlock, you didn't get the recognition. And I wasn't super. I, was a, I wasn't a featured athlete. So uh, I didn't get the, the notoriety. But I got a chance here. And I was, uh, had some great kids here, Dennis Sprouse especially. Dennis Sprouse, as we discussed earlier, was uh, from Northern Kentucky, in the Highlands, a good, good football player and track man. Uh, who was the featured sprinter when I got here. He was the number one guy, go-to guy, and very gracious. And uh, he was a short fella, and I guess I had more, more legs than he did. And he was very helpful to me. Uh, I want that known. He was very helpful in helping get me ready to become a better sprinter. And I had a lot of help coming into the school. So that's, I answer a lot of things there, but it's all in my heart and in my mind to say those things uh, upon coming into school. Well, well, Doug, why don't you jump in and tell us a little bit about your experiences with Jack and how you how you first met and what, what those days were like. I was a sports editor for the Progress, okay. but before the track season got started, uh, first place I ever met Jack, Jack Jackson was in uh, one of Bill Burge's uh, history classes. And uh, that was where, you know, I think, you know, so, so we got to know each other before uh, I ever saw him with his, with his spikes on. And, Jack, when you first started out running track here, I was thinking about uh, Dennis Sprouse and uh, Richie, uh, Richie Emmons, Emmons. Another, yeah. another sprinter, also a graduate uh, of Highlands. Mm -hmm. uh, the track was a real cinder track That's right. uh, down there uh, oh, uh, around, yeah. around the old football stadium there That's right. uh, at, at Hangar Field where the Chapel of Meditation uh, uh, now exists. But before you were finished here, uh, we had that nice new track That's right. up on the hill and one of my great remembrances of that is uh, you and I kind of watching dumbstruck as Ralph Boston, Ralph Boston. did his did right. his exhibition run exactly. up there one time. Exactly. Yeah Ralph Boston I'm gonna follow up on Doug here because uh, Boston uh, was a great Olympian. Yeah, he just he was going we uh, came back it's the sixty two now we're talking. We had the very first rubber ride asphalt track in Kentucky right here in the, on our campus. And uh, we brought in uh, uh, Boston from Tennessee State uh, to be our, our name host. And huh. uh, he uh, ran a hurdle for us. And he was a 9'4 sprinter, too, by the way. He was, <laughs> he was a 6 foot, like 6'5", whatever he was. Wow. But, uh, a great Olympian. And uh, we, we grew from that track down Old Hangar Field, the uh, tender track to the one we see now, the Samuels track now, which is one of the finest in the country. And, and how did it come to be that that track was built? Um, that sounds like a Bob Martin project, maybe, that had, well, it, had it, come it, up uh, with the money it, for it, that. You know, it, 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 it certainly was. And, of course, you know, I was a, I was a student then. I don't, 
So I wasn't privy to what the uh, uh, <laughs> what the financing what the financing was for that uh, track. No, I wasn't I wasn't consulted on that. But uh, I, you know I do I do remember quite well that uh, you know Dr. Martin articulated the vision of a of a of a centralized athletic. Complex. area complex Keep there that, yeah. that included that included the alumni coliseum the baseball field uh the track ultimately the the i, I never heard that begley before. begley yeah. building yeah. and hangar field yeah. just right there across uh, you know on the other side of of, uh, of kit carson from the track and you know you look at you know it didn't it didn't happen it, by by accident it gave me a chance like i said earlier to uh develop uh a place where i found myself. I came here in a, a pretty shy person and left uh, with some degree of self-worth and I haven't looked back. A lot of people uh, in town and on campus embraced us. Uh, the 1960s or the 1960s. But that notwithstanding, the people here wanted success to happen for those teenage guys from Dayton, Ohio. You know, the you know, I, I'm just so impressed by everything you say. You know, not only is EKU like a family in many in many yeah. respects, but now the whole town. Um, yeah, yeah. This 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 place particularly is particularly for for a young black student. It's it's special. Uh, so many good things happened here. Uh, they got, I met my wife, Shirley White Jackson here, back in uh, at Berea College graduate, and um, uh, had just uh, been able to touch some people. Uh, through my association with the university, be able to, to call some folk, it's made things happen over the years. I can call anybody on this campus uh, to help someone who wants, who wants help, who wants to succeed, use what influence I have to, to bring it to bear for folks who want to achieve. And uh, I've been somewhat criticized because what might be a, a firm stance, Paul, you read the, some of the stuff, but. Uh, and we're back. Uh, wasn't that amazing about Jack Johnson? And while the uh, video was, was, was airing, we had a chance to talk about that whole pioneering spirit and where we are today in history and moving forward. I want to just share a couple of more things about Jack Jackson because he is, in my eyes, a great man. And what exactly does that look like? Well, from my perspective, it's a man of great integrity, great character, execution-oriented, meaning if he says it, he's going to do it. And I'm just going to read a few other things about him before resuming the final minutes of this interview with this remarkable man. Uh, Jack Jackson believes in giving back to the community. He's a member of the Association of Christian Athletes, the National Contract Management Association, Christian Appalachian Project, Kiwanis International, Full Gospel Fellowship of Businessmen International. He's the past president of Eastern Kentucky University National Alumni Association, of which you just watched the video, and has served on the board of Workplace Reconnections, a group dedicated to helping ex-offenders return to society as productive law-abiding citizens. The thing that I will share with all of you that are viewing today is that the assumption is made that people that have achieved things have done them in a hole someplace, and it's just been a happenstance. But you should know that nobody who is pioneering and breaking uh, traditions and just doing what they do got there by staying in a hole. They have to be leaders and they have to be people that see a vision that God gave them. So on that note, we're going to get back to this interview. Tell me a little bit about these organizations that you're still involved in. I know you do a lot of national speaking. I know that you are considered an icon among uh, motivational speakers. But what is your favorite nonprofit? of this group that I just read? Because I, I love the full gospel businessmen, and there's well, some other... Well, thank you, Michelle, for the kind words. I, I believe that one must be varied. You, 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 you've got to have an, uh, an array 
of interest to simulate you. Uh, mm -hmm. Business is very important. Uh, the gospel ministry is important. Uh, without question, it underpins us. Yes, it does. But I get a real satisfaction on helping folk who have been incarcerated. Oh, really? For you a number did. of years, I was part of the board. Uh, Jim Dubro, a good friend of mine, and other, other folks in the community, uh, we go forth to help young men get employment. Okay. Uh, once incarcerated, we feel that a job is the one saving grace. Yes, it is. It, it gives one self-respect. Yes. It, it gives a sense of worth. Mm -hmm. And so it's been my pleasure to observe folk that we've been able to help, been able to help get jobs. Okay. And to regain a place in society. Uh, I had a young man uh, that I saw about two, two months ago who did some time. Okay. Two different times, matter of fact. Oh, he's, he's a repeat. A repeat oh, offender. Okay. Read a repeat and, offender. And uh, but okay. he's he's doing he's gainfully employed now. He's doing well. Uh, he's helping people along the way. He's oh, a, good. A, a, oh, other good. folk who are incarcerated. Okay, I like that. And I, I like I, that. The humor here, I, a bit of humor. I have a saying I use in a lot of my speeches. I'd say, "Don't worry about the mule going blind. Just keep loading the wagon." And what it's saying, you know, is don't worry about the sidebar small stuff. Mm -hmm. Just stay in your own lane. Mm -hmm. Do what you're supposed to do. Right. And don't worry about stuff. So this young man stopped. He saw me. We hugged and embraced. He said, he said, Mr. Jackson, you know, you told me something 20 years ago. Wow. That, that stayed with me in prison. And I, you know, I was so embarrassed. Yeah, I mean, what are you talking about? He said, you told me that. Don't worry about the mule going blind. <laughs> Just keep, keep loading, loading the wagon. Keep loading the wagon. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, the small things like that, uh, mm -hmm. other more concrete things obviously along the way that I was able to help with some things, and that to me is very rewarding. Uh, Kiwanis International is a, is a great organization, obviously. Yes, they are. Yes, but they are. Uh, I guess I'm more at home with a hands-on uh, approach with people. That's uh -huh. where I find my, uh, my strengths lie. I, mean, I, I, can, I can talk to folk, obviously, but my real pleasure comes in helping folk who are trying to get well, a foothold. Well, this ex-offender thing is real. Yeah, trust me. I, it it I, is I, so real today. I've seen firsthand how real it really is. And, yes. Uh, it, uh, these people uh, that we tend to want to uh, put aside, within that group lies some, some genius, too. Oh, I have to believe that. But we have to just, here again, go beyond our box, mm -hmm. our self-imposed boxes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, to do what we can. Now you, we can't save the world necessarily one person, but you can help. But you can do. That one starfish, yeah. you know, that yeah. you threw back in the water well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that, that one you saved. Right, that <laughs> you know? one you saved. So that one is yeah. grateful. That yes, you see now. yes. So yes. I think that we must be uh, optimistic. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to be hopeful. Yes. And you have to uh, exhibit um, hope for people. You have mm -hmm. to be positive. You know, right, pe people, right. uh, people need to be uplifted. Yes, they you do. Know, they've been beat down enough. Right, right, you know right, I mean? you know, right. Uh, you, you need to to come on and, 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 and be, and not, not be false about it, mm -hmm. but here again, it goes back to sincerity. Right. If you show sincerity, true sincerity, uh, it works. I believe it, it does, It works, Jack. see. I believe uh, it does. Ron Todd, and I see a lot of time. Everybody likes being stroked. Everybody. I don't care where you are. I've done yeah. it. I've been, yeah. I've done it on purpose. From the mm -hmm. janitor to the CEO. Right. Everybody likes being stroked. Right. Genuine praise. Right. You know. Right. I and, well, agree. and also, it uplifts me. Right. You know. So, well, so I, I feel I feel so affirmed. We're running out of time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a win-win if, if you think about it. It is a win-win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a win-win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I just, if, if they want you to come to speak, how do they find you? Well, I've, I've got a card. Jack Jackson Motivation. And Jack I, Jackson I, Motivation. I've got a card here at the station that they can call. Well, I want you to give your number. Okay, Jack Jackson Motivation. Area code 937-837-8422 is my home and my cell is area code 937 Three nine seven one zero oh nine one. And, and thank you for being my Facebook friend. It's my pleasure. It's been. It's been. I can't lose. You can't. I can't lose. 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 Well, today's interview with the amazing, incomparable, <laughs> incomparable Jack Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> love this man. Love his spirit. 
And this should motivate some of you that find yourselves feeling sorry for yourself as you get older. Oh, yeah. yep. This man is 70, and he is a powerhouse getting ready to do more things. Can't wait. Let this be an encouragement and a motivator for you to seize your destiny. And don't make excuses because what's done is done. I appreciate you being a part of my world for this past hour with Jack Jackson. And again, as always, I welcome you to tune in on future episodes. Don't forget, if you've missed any, you can go to YouTube, uh, Michelle Graves, The Power of Money, and get back issues, back videos, and enjoy some of my other guests. But this interview today was fascinating. So I conclude today's show with, as always, blessings. And may God be with you and your family richly. Take care. Oh, I, mean, I, I can't go there. I know you can't. I, I, I just uh, can't because my you, family was hillbilly.